Okay, so we're picking up where we left off at the last video. Uh, remember that we're trying to take Bernoulli's equation, uh, which, remember, we derived uh, using arguments related to conservation of energy under a very specific set of assumptions and apply that result to solve problems involving pipe flow. And the reason that's important is because pipe flow problems are kinds of problems that we encounter a lot in chemical engineering. So it'd be useful to have a simple systematic way to solve those kinds of problems. And Bernoulli's equation uh, offers a convenient starting point, but there's some problems that we need to address uh, because of some of the assumptions we made. The first issue is that, remember, the flow velocity in a pipe is not constant over the pipe cross-section uh, because, again, we have no slip condition at the walls. So we needed to find a way to incorporate that into Bernoulli's equation, and we did that in the last video using the kinetic energy correction factor. So we've taken care of this, of this issue, but there's another uh, actually more important issue, and that's the fact that Bernoulli's equation ignores viscous losses. So remember that uh, shear stresses are related to velocity gradients in the flow through a constitutive relationship uh, like Newton's law of viscosity. And so uh, we expect to have these kinds of viscous losses or viscous effects near boundaries uh, where uh, there's gradients uh, in velocity. And so that's why we said that Bernoulli's equation, as we derived it previously, was valid in the bulk flow, away from bounding surfaces, uh, because those locations would be areas where we wouldn't have these kinds of, of velocity gradients. Uh, but, you know, we have walls in a pipe, uh, and we have no slip at those walls, so there's going to be viscous effects that we can't ignore. So, as a starting point, uh, we can rewrite Bernoulli's equation uh, as follows here. So, remember we have delta P over rho plus the kinetic energy term, uh, and here we're writing it uh, using the kinetic energy correction factor alpha that we derived last time uh, that allows us to express the kinetic energy in terms of the average velocity. So we have one half alpha delta V average squared plus the potential energy change G delta Z. And then we added two additional terms here. So one uh, is this uh, term re representing shaft work. So this is mechanical work that's done either on the, on the fluid by the surroundings or by the fluid on the surroundings. A and this is something that, that would be specified in the problem. Uh, you, would, you would know, you know what this is uh, or what form this takes. Uh, so really, just, we just have to include it here, and then that would be specified in the problem. Then an additional term, this L sub V term, which represents the viscous losses. So if we can find a way to collapse these viscous effects into this one term, then that would be very useful because then we can still use Bernoulli's equation to solve problems involving pipe flow. We don't have to go back uh, and, and solve the Navier-Stokes equations uh, for, for every problem that we want to solve. Uh, but the question is, how do we do that? How do we express this viscous loss term? So we need to find a way to do that. And I guess as a starting point, we're going to look at a momentum balance, but a macroscopic momentum balance. So this would be a, a conservation of momentum applied uh, over, over a, a macroscopic control volume. And so I'll do that here on the next slide. So remember that the conservation of momentum, uh, we can think of that in terms of basically Newton's second law of motion, says that the sum of the forces on a system uh, plus the net rate of inflow of momentum into the system. Uh, so the sum of over all the inlets of m dot v uh, minus the outflow of momentum from the system. So the sum over all the outlets of m dot v uh, equals the time rate of change of momentum in the system. Uh, so again, uh, this is just an expression of Newton's, uh, Newton's second law of motion. And we're expressing this over a macroscopic control volume now, not a differential control volume like we looked at before. And remember that the mass flow rate, m dot, is equal to the integral over the cross-sectional area of rho v dot n dA. And this v dot n selects for us, again, the velocity component that's passing actually through the boundary. And so if we're considering pipe flow, uh, just like when we looked in the last video at the kinetic energy correction factor, it's basically a one-dimensional uh, kind of flow uh, the flow's in one direction, and it's generally going to be going normal to the cross-sectional uh, area of the pipe. Uh, so v dot n, we can just express uh, in terms of a scalar uh, v. So this is just the velocity uh, generally going through the pipe, uh, because it's going to be going uh, through the pipe, straight through the pipe, 
uh, so straight through the cross-sectional area of the pipe. So when we do that, uh, then we can also make some assumptions. We're going to assume steady state. So that means that the net rate of change of momentum in the system uh, is, is zero. Uh, so this, this term on the, on the right-hand side is zero. And again, because we're looking at a pipe, basically we have a situation where we have one inlet and one outlet. So the flow coming in one end of the pipe is going to come out the other end of the pipe. There's no uh, branches or, or any other kinds of things going on. Uh, so if that's the case, then we can uh, express uh, that the, the mass flow rate in is equal to the mass flow rate out, and we can just express that as m dot. So when we apply these uh, simplifications, then this momentum balance becomes the sum of the forces on the system is equal to the momentum carried in and out by flow, m dot times v out minus v in. And remember that v, again, represents the velocity components uh, going through the boundaries, but since we're in a pipe, we have simple boundaries where the normal vector is pointed, I guess, basically along the axis of the pipe uh, because it's normal to the cross-sectional area. And the flow, we imagine, is just has is only uh, going in that direction. So v dot n uh, then reduces to this, uh, this scalar v. Okay, so uh, I think it's easier to uh, visualize what we're talking about as we consider uh, applying this to pipe flow problems if I draw up a picture here. So so this is part of a pipe. This is a section of a pipe here, a cylindrical pipe. And I'm showing some part of the pipe here. This So this is kind of a disk of width dx and it has some cross-sectional area ax. So this is our control volume. This is our system that we're going to be looking at. And so the flow coming into the system uh, has some velocity vx and some pressure P, and the flow coming out has some velocity Vx plus dVx, some differential change over the distance from, uh, from the inlet to dx, and P plus dP on this side. And again, uh, I've drawn a coordinate system where x is going along the pipe axis, and z is going uh, orthogonal to that. And I'll, I'll show you why I'm using this coordinate system in a minute. Uh, and then also this, uh, this A sub W. This is also an area, but it represents the, the contact area. So this is kind of the area that this disk of fluid is in contact with the pipe wall. So this is called the wetted area. It's the surface area of the fluid in contact with the wall. And A sub X is the cross-sectional area of this segment. So we're going to consider this kind of disk-shaped uh, system of fluid. Okay, so let's apply our momentum balance uh, to this uh, to this system. And in the x direction, right, the, the direction of flow along the axis of the pipe, so we get the sum of the forces, the x component of the sum of the forces is equal to m dot times v out minus v in. So v out is vx plus dvx and the velocity coming in is m dot vx. So you can see that these m dot vx terms cancel and we get that the sum of the forces is equal to m dot the mass flow rate times dvx. Or we can rewrite it so that some of the forces in the x direction minus m dot dvx is equal to zero. So I'm going to call this equation star star uh, just so I can refer to it later uh, when, we, uh, when we come back to it. Okay, so now we need to know what are the forces that are acting on this, this uh, disk-shaped control volume. And there's several different kinds of forces that we can consider. So the first kind of force is a pressure force. Uh, so the change uh, in pressure or the net pressure force acting on this disk is equal to the difference between the pressure on the two sides. So the pressure, um, the pressure on the inlet side, P, and the pressure on the outlet side is P plus dP. So those pressures act over the same cross-sectional area because the cross-sectional dimensions of this pipe don't change. So the net force on this disk is the force on the inlet side, P times A sub X, minus the force on the outlet side, P plus dP times A sub X. 
So again, uh, the P terms cancel, and we get that the, the net force is equal to minus the cross-sectional area times dp.